Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Battle Buddy Podcast. Today, I've got another past guest come back to join us to give us an update on his business. If you remember a while back, I had the founder of the Temple Massager, Joe, come on and tell us all about his invention, the Temple Massager, and how it was impacting veterans uh, with you know their their mental health issues and relieving stress and a lot of other things. I'll, I'll, I'll let him talk about it because uh, it's his passion, his baby. Uh, but he's going to share some updates with us. He's got some hot off the press news on it as well. Uh, and I know he's going to break down some of the things that he's found kind of talking to the first responder, uh, the police and fire uh, EMT uh, community out there too, uh, about what their reaction to it's been. So I'm excited to to have another conversation with Joe and see what's see what's new, see what the latest uh, and latest and greatest is on the Temple Massager. So we'll uh, see you. Uh, See you after the introduction. Welcome to the Battle Buddy Podcast with Keith McKeever. So welcome back, Joe. Hey, Keith. Good to see you. Thanks for yeah. having me, and man. Yeah, no problem, man. Always good to catch up with a past guest and and uh, get the latest and greatest. Get the update. You know, just like the uh, the TV shows. You know, where are they now? <laughs> Here we are. So. Yeah, you know, for those who haven't uh, seen it, you know, you came on. I, gosh, I don't even know. I should have looked that up and seen exactly when it was, but it was it was a while ago. Uh, but you came on to talk to us about your temple massager. Of course, I left mine way out of reach over there. I'm sure you got yours probably handy. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, but an awesome little device uh, to help with, well, a variety of, of different things with mental health and anxiety and stress relief and stuff like that. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool little device to help with that. Um, but you want to come on and share some stuff and some, some latest and greatest, but before we do that, for those who haven't heard your story, you give us a little, uh, summary and breakdown of, of your story. Absolutely. So yeah, at the end of my army career, uh, as a combat engineer, um, I was dealing with a lot of different stress and I was always clenching my jaw. So I was always aching in my, my masseter muscle along my jaw here and then, the temporalis musculature is up around, you know, the, the temple area. And I was just constantly, you know, getting headaches, rubbing my head somewhere or another like that. And I realized that, you know, when you're doing that, you're engaging your entire clavicle humerus, your, your upper body is pretty much all engaged to hold your arms up. And I was just thinking, you know, like a, a caveman or a grunt, if you will, I needed a fork stick, you know, that way I could just hold this thing, uh, in one hand and rest my elbow yet i get this ripping killer cranial massage and, and down into my jaw and under my cheekbone and so that was kind of the rough impetus of the device's original uh thought process where it came from and i literally went out to buy it and it did not exist and so you know you get that that light bulb thing coming on and you're like did, did i discover something that hasn't been you know, created and I did. And, uh, so it was a big, long process. We got a patent on it and, uh, I, I actually walked away from a, uh, budding career in comedy down Hollywood. So, you know, that was kind of a funny moment in my life, no pun intended, but I had to make a choice. Like I couldn't go produce this TV show that spike TV wanted to buy from me. And I'm working with great people in Hollywood, just unbelievable, how it got there. You know, I don't have connections into Hollywood. I, at the time I didn't. So it was really wild that this happened so fast. And so it came to the point where I couldn't do both. And after 13 years, all my friends are going to war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, I was donating temple massagers. And so I literally walked away from that whole TV world, Hollywood comedy world. And I committed to temple massager. And so, you know, for me, that was one of those big decisive big decision moments, big decisive pivot point in my life. Do not regret it one bit. Um, love the fact I can help people with an, an idea and a creation. And I did that in honor of two friends of mine that I served with that gave all. And that was private Curtis Young and Sergeant first class, Michael Ottolini. Uh, Curtis passed away in a drowning incident in training in the army reserve. And then uh, right after I got out, after 13 years, um, my former engineer unit got deployed to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. And, and that's where my former supervisor, 
uh, Mike Godolini, who was KIA in Iraq. And so, you know, there's a lot going on there, highly emotionally charged, you know. And so then that's where the Temple Massager went from, donated 5,000 around the world in their name and their honor. And then that got us working with Stanford School of Medicine, the VA at Palo Alto, California. And that's kind of where it was left off when you and I were talking. I was just going to say, yeah, it was right about that point. Yep. Yeah. So pretty um, recent news at about that time. And, um, and, and if anybody's curious, I know you, you on that, the first time we talked, you dove a little bit more into that Hollywood story. So if anybody's yeah. interested, you got to go back and listen to that. Uh, you've got quite the, quite the story. Uh, it was fun. That. I'm glad I have my a little footprint down there in a brief moment. But, you know, like in the service, you often hear that phrase being something, being part of something that's bigger than yourself. I lived it and I'm, I'm grateful that I stuck with the Temple Massager and forego my desires because this truly has delivered something uh, that allows me to experience being part of something that's bigger than myself. I think it's something we all as veterans, you know, we, we all understand because when we're in, we have a mission. And when we're out, a lot of people don't have a mission. And when you find that mission, whether it's simple massagers or me podcasting or anybody else, what, whatever your mission is, veteran focused or not, um, it gives a little bit of clarity. And Man, I'm, it, I've said that to other people before. I'm like, I know people like civilians that are not veterans. They can't get it. I'm like, you have no idea how grateful I am to have a mission. To, I just... I'm really grateful that sense of purpose, right? And it, it means a lot when you're coming out of the military and you understand that capacity and the implications. And so I am really grateful uh, to have a mission to be in a fight because, you know, you got to remember, I'm a guy in a cabin in the woods. Yeah, I, I jokingly refer to my, my building where I assemble, ship, and receive as, uh, I live in a town called Casadero, right? It's a small mountain community in Northern California. I like to lovingly and jokingly refer to this as the Casadero Neuroscience Institute. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so, very sophisticated. Sounds like a very large scale, high tech, yeah. sophisticated facility. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, uh, it, it definitely sounds like a small town. I'll tell you that. Oh, it is. Yeah, it yeah, is. Definitely, it's not, great. definitely couldn't pinpoint that one on a map. Yeah, it was good for me to get out in the hills. I'm, I'm a natural kind of outdoorsman, and you know, I love the outdoors. And so it was a great place for me. But it's home. We set up the business here. We built a building, and um, that's it. So, you know, now, like I was saying, we started working with law enforcement and first responders. It, it kind of started years ago after the Paradise Fire. We work with Butte County Sheriff's Department where I donated, I don't know, I think 80 or 90 temple massagers after the town, you know, burned off the map. It was really horrific. And so I, I literally cold called the sheriff's department and it went from there and we got great feedback from first responders. And uh, it was in line with everything we heard from, you know, uh, service members in Iraq and Afghanistan and veterans. So, um, but then COVID hit, you know, right. And just, <laughs> we know all about yeah. that and it scuttled everything. And, and so, but, Again, I'm grateful to be in the fight. I have a fight. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you work too hard at this. Blah, blah, blah. It's difficult. I'm like, man, if you're trained in any kind of a dig deep, find a reason, fiber of your being, and being a combat engineer will give you that. Man, I'm grateful to be in a fight. You know, this is not easy. And uh, it's difficult. Nobody wants to hear an innovation coming out of a non-government facility, non-university facility, non-laboratory, non-Eli Lilly, non-Johnson & Johnson. You know, it's hard for a guy like me to break through, but I am doing that. We are persevering. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's um, you know, those companies have large budgets, large staff, research and development. You know, when, when they make an announcement, they're like, oh, hey, look, we, look at this cool – a device that we have or medical advancement, whatever, like the world takes notice because they, they have the money and the clout to, but yeah, when you're a very, you know, when you're one person or a small team, it's hard to get a, a lot of traction. So I could totally understand that. It really is. You, you end up in a place where you have to pay for all that. 
and you know marketing and advertising costs are they're really expensive. Uh, th that it can be, you know, every small business out there, <laughs> business owner out there knows exactly what you're talking about. No yep. matter what you're trying to sell, trying to cut through that clutter, man. Absolutely. Um, I want to back up to that, that paradise fire though. Um, was that close to you? Is it or? fairly? I mean, it's like a okay. four hour drive, okay. you know, North of me. Um, and so I don't know if you can say that close or not. I mean, California is a huge state. So I guess for California, it's pretty close. <laughs> For me, driving four hours, that's close. Yeah. So uh, that, was, that was just a couple years before COVID, or was that right before COVID? Yeah, it was that like 2017 or 18 okay. that hit, and then and then COVID you know, started popping its ugly head up. And that's and, the uh, one they have, uh, I think, a pretty good uh, documentary on that one, I think, on Netflix yeah, or Hulu yeah. or something. Okay. I think I, I Ron know I've seen didn't Ron Howard do that? I think he was a guy that did that. Might I could be. I, I remember seeing it a while back. So as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I know that. Yeah. You know, it's just getting back to the period. gravity of things, you know, with the company and what I come across. Um, we went up there and had the meeting. I met with the Butte County Sheriff's Department Critical Incident Stress Management Team, peer support. That's kind of what they refer to it as. And um, we did the meeting. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. And there's about eight or 10 representatives there from the sheriff's department, different service organizations, police department, sheriff's department, uh, foundations, you know, nonprofits that support the law enforcement first responder community up there. And um, afterwards, I wanted to go drive around and look, you know, around town. And it was ugly. And, you know, you got to realize a lot of people passed away in that fire. And it's just horrific, you know. And, uh, it, I wanted to do that because I wanted the gravity of the time of the incident to sit with me. And I wanted to absorb that because I know that you can gain strength through adversity. Right. So I've never been shy of jumping into a hard situation where the odds are stacked against you and, um, doesn't look easy, right? From day one, Temple Massage, it's never been easy. I mean, to get a patent, yet it has like a 70 or 80% failure rate. Who's going to sign up for those odds? <laughs> you got to be a little crazy, right? <laughs> sure, I'll yeah. try it. Yeah. yeah I'll, I gave it a hell of a shot and yeah. we did it. So I wanted to see the devastation because it fortified my resolve. And so going through all that was an unbelievable experience, you know? And so through COVID and all the things that were troublesome and difficult and delay, 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 and, um, that was, you know, a good move on my part to understand and take in the gravity of what it is I'm dealing with, with people, service members, first responders go through what they did. Like I was never in combat. Okay. I got called up from the first Gulf war, um, and then we got demobilized and then I got out shortly thereafter. And then of course, right after I get out, my unit gets deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. So, um, it helped me understand how my invention can help, why it'll help. And no matter what, and believe me, brother, I have suffered. Like I have been through, I was on food stamps for a while, you know, but I never lost focus. And it was because of the gravity of the situation and the pain and anguish that people have gone through that do go through as service members, as first responders, you know? And so it helped me go through some really tough time, but I sacrificed, you know, and, and I, I love that I did it. And a lot of people have told me, Oh, well, have you been paid yet? You know? And I say, look, have I made money? No. Have I been paid? Yes. And I said it before, I'll say it again. It's the kind of pay that's like I have gold bars and platinum and jewels and rubies, anything you can think of valuable diamonds. My pockets were burst, bursting with those things. I just can't show you them and I can't spend them. But they are the things that I will take to my grave with me because I know I put it out on the line for our brothers and sisters. Totally understandable. Uh, very similar reasons, you know, uh, why I do this podcast. You know, I don't, hey, I've had a few people tell me, you know, hey, I appreciate it. I, I love this particular message or that particular message. But, 
you know, yet to have anybody, you know, anybody really reach out with a very, very profound, you know, like you literally saved my life or you did this or that. But I know that all these little stories now that there's well over a hundred now that there's all these actionable ways where it can really dramatically improve people's lives. If they take the action, you know, it can have a, a positive impact. And I know that for lots of people out there, if they take the action on it, it will have an impact on their lives one way or another, whether it's a, a temple massager to help them with that, or if it's taking somebody's financial advice or they pick up a book and they learn something from it, or they take advantage of a nonprofit, you know, to get some help, whatever, whatever the case may be, the resources and the information's out there. And, uh, you know, just knowing that just doing something to, to put that out there to help people, that's all the pay you need. That's huge. You know, I've also, like, I like to say, you know, not everybody's going to go through what I went through, right? It's very difficult to get a patent. It's very difficult to prove, you know, a medical device, uh, a camp therapy, complementary alternative medicine, right? Not everybody's going to do that. And, uh, and that's cool, but that doesn't mean you can't serve. And I always tell people, you're feeling down, you're bummed, just, you want to give more, you want to do something. Here's what I do. I did just I do it all the time. Every chance I get, go hold the door open for somebody, man. You want to get a quick payoff psychologically, heart, soul, go hold the door open for somebody. I don't care if they're young or old, who or what they are. Go hold the door open for somebody coming in or out of building. And they're always going to say, Oh, thank you. And you're going to say, It's my pleasure. Grateful to be able to help. And it's, it instantly makes you feel good. You're going to smile, you're going to walk back to your car, and you're going to be like, hmm, you know what? I just served a purpose. Right on. I'm good. Suddenly, I feel a little bit better. Seriously. It doesn't take much. Just nope. we got to get out of our comfort zone. we got to get into being there for other people and not be selfish with our whatever resources or time and be smart about it. I'm not telling you to give up your home and go be homeless to do something. <laughs> but, you know, just, just little things can make a big difference. Yeah, you know, or even just being consciously aware if you're out and about and you run into a cashier and it looks like they're having a bad day or just somebody down on their luck. And, you know, if you're at McDonald's and there's somebody homeless on the side of the street, you know, grab an extra burger and be like, hey, I got some extra food. You want it? Or somebody, a cashier looks like they're having a bad day, you know, put a smile on your face and yep. be like, hey, you know, I hope you have a blessed day. You know, yep. hope, you know, just strike up a conversation, distract them, get them in a different mood. Like, just the little things you have no idea how much of an impact you could be making on somebody's life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just like hold up, holding the door. You just never know. Um, that could have an impact on them. Their impact could have, they could do something for somebody else and vice versa. And next thing you know, it's a compound effect it, uh, that we could all, all see somewhere. So. Yep. How's the old phrase go? You get more sugar than you do vinegar. Yeah. Something like that. Yep. <laughs> something along those lines. So, uh, how, what kind of feedback have you gotten then on these massagers directly from the, from the first responders then? Okay. So, um, kind of already talked about the, um, paradise fire. Yeah. Um, you know, it was headache relief, TMD relief, you know, temple mandibular disorder. People say I have TMJ, what they're referring to is TMD, temple mandibular disorder and sleep aid. And so, you know, we, we get out of COVID and everything. So lately, you know, here's the news. I've been working with police departments. So I happened to get approached by the chief of police of Santa Rosa Police Department in California. And he has a 250 officer department. So Chief John Cregan comes up to me at a business event. I was invited to speak. And he literally says, I think you have something that's going to help with my PTS uh, issues I have with some officers. Stre I got, he says, I got all kinds of stress and injury claims and headaches. And I think you have something. He gives me his business card. I get my business card. We go through about three months worth of back and forth. We end up working with Santa Rosa Police Foundation. We work with Sonoma County Business Alliance and a bunch of different businesses. And so basically the Bus Sonoma County Business Alliance, they put out a call to businesses to help pay for temple massagers that were going to go to Santa Rosa police department. And so I, I contributed some as well. 
And so we got those. I met with Chief John Cregan um, May 4th, you know, two months ago. And um, uh, he and I met and I met he directed me to work with this wellness director at the police department. So I work with him. And then on May, I went through the whole thing, like how to use it, when, where, why, how. I, I, we talked about the abstract with our data from Stanford and Palo Alto that we're still working on completing because, again, COVID scuttled it. But he was like, Joe, all these other um, therapies and uh, treatments and whatever, they're, they're like $7,500, $30,000, big price tag stuff. And he's like, that's yeah, not for a police department, you know, it's government funded to, uh, or taxpayer funded, you know, to, to bite off. Yeah. Well, that'll hurt a city's budget really quick. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, he, he says to me, look, you know, we send uh, officers on this, I don't know what it is, a long weekend, or maybe it's a week long resiliency program for 30 grand. And then three weeks later, they're kind of back where they were because they're at, you know, they're under the forces at work that are back on the job. So whatever, there's limited effect. He's talking about it and he keeps looking at the temple massage. He's like, this thing's $130. You can show me abstract data from Stanford and VA Palo Alto. You've got com you've got a letter from a combat commander. You've got, I keep going, I don't want to name them all, but he looks at our data set. Let's just say, okay. The packet. And he's like, there's nothing to lose. I mean, the city uh, businesses, all these businesses paid for it. You're donating. It's I've got nothing to lose. Okay. That was May 4th. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. I pulled over. I think I was making a phone call or something. And I get a text from the Santa Rosa Police Department, wellness director. And he says, this will set your weekend, right? Because Cinco de Mayo fell on a Friday. And, uh, he gives me an email that he got from a police dispatcher. And she says, um, I had, I was at work. I got a migraine so bad that I was preparing to leave work. I had to go home. I couldn't, she couldn't function. Right. I was issued a temple massager from the wellness director and I started using it. And she pointed out in the email that she did not look at her computer screen because I told her, you have to look like your eyes need to be closed. You can't look at your computer screen. You to temple massage. It's just counterproductive. Right. Kind of you avoid that white or that blue screen, whatever yeah. it is. It's strange. So I just said, you know, while, while you're using it or whatever, just let your head look down, look at the floor, close your eyes. Just don't look at your computer screen. So she's, I like the fact that she, you know, clarified that she didn't look at the computer screen. And she says, my migraine was gone within 10 to 15 minutes. And I stayed on the job. And uh, she said, I have chronic migraines, so I look forward to taking this home. You know, there's another attribute of the device. It, it's, look, if this thing's going to go to Ford operating bases and, and uh, around the world, you know, then obviously it's going to go home and go to work and go to school. So it's highly portable. It's very so lightweight, then, extremely lightweight. I yeah. mean, you can, you can so pack it anywhere. Cheyenne, the wellness director, he added his commentary. And he says, Joe, excuse me. <clears throat> so joe you saved her pain you saved her sick leave time and you saved the police department a staffing shortage on a holiday and that's huge it's probably and like so, time and a half or something, something yeah like that. I'm yeah big... and so I, I think i wrote back and i said something like so was it worth 130 bucks i gave him a discount but you know the, the retail is 130 so i just said do you think that's worth 130 bucks and he said, the value is 100% on our side. Your price is ridiculous compared to what benefit we're getting. So that was recent. Um, on top of that, so when I got that in writing and dated, it's documentable. They're going to give me a full update here at the end of this month, by the way. So, and they're talking about reordering now. So uh, since that happened, I have basically gone across the country to contact police department, departments and uh, some departments have money for wellness things. Some people, some departments don't. Some people don't even pay attention to what you're doing. So it's a hit and miss kind of a thing. But we are working with Code 4. 
out of Colorado. Code four radio talk is I'm okay. Officer, okay, right? So this was serendipitous. I get a phone call about a month ago or so from Code 4. I think they're in Colorado Springs. And the PhD there says, hey, I was hoping to talk to you about buying temple massagers. And I said, yeah, no problem. How would you find my company? And she says, well, you contacted us a year ago, and then we got a sample. And we have st started using it. And nothing relieved facial muscle she said, nothing relieves PTS-related facial muscle tension like the temple massager. And we want to start buying it by the case. And so I sold her a case on the spot. They're collecting feedback. And so what, you know, what she, as she said, um, we work with complex PTS, people that are dealing with complex PTS, first responders and combat veterans. And um, so that's amazing, right? And that was serendipitous. And then, so uh, I, I've reached out across the country and now uh, we're working with, and it, it's initial, you know, so I don't have a lot of feedback, but uh, we've had samples requested by Boston Police Department, their wellness director. And uh, just the other day, uh, I was asked for a meeting with uh, Cincinnati Police Department and they have their fire district wellness officer on the call as well. And, you know, at the end of these calls, when I explain everything and go through it and answer questions, I, I ask them, you know, does this sound like something you're interested in? Yeah, yeah, okay. Can, you know, could I offer you a sample device just for your examination and use? And I'm here to support it. Please do. Yeah, we want a sample. So there's various departments. Those are just some big names. Um, and, um, you know, I'm working a path across the country, man. Like I think, what is that? Highway 80 roughly. So sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. We're going through from California all the way to Boston and in between. And so, um, the, the big news is, is that I'm, I'm happy to share with you right now is that, um, through some work of mine with Chicago VA at Jesse Brown VA, um, there's a couple people there that I'm communicating with. Um, they got a device, a sample. I was back in Chicago. I can't remember November, I think last year. And um, they got a device and it got passed to a couple different VA people. And then it got passed to a Marine Corps combat veteran who works at the road home. And the road home is a big, group that has, I think, four different locations, UCLA, Boston, uh, University of Miami, and Rush University in Chicago. They're funded by the Wounded Warrior Project and the Chicago Bears, amongst other, you know, big name people, I'm sure. And they work with veterans that are dealing with complex PTS. And the, the cool thing about their program is they work with the families as well, which I think is important. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, nobody should oh, be yeah. tackling this alone you, you know you got to reach out to your support network if you don't have family find it find your community find some family we're all brothers and sisters you know we got this veteran bond so my love for my brother and sisters is right out there up front i wore it on my sleeve you know so even if you don't have a family find it it's out there so um i got them uh, i did a class with them on zoom and um I work with a combat veteran, Marine Corps female, and she says, hey, I've been using this thing for like two months. And I'm like, that's awesome. I had no idea. <laughs> and so, you know, that kind of goes to show how easy it is to use and all that. And so today um, I got an order to buy a handful of uh, temple massagers and carry cases um, for the road home in Chicago. And they're going to use it for uh, headache relief and for uh, TMD. So, you know, it goes back into massaging your masseter and, and your temporalis and right around the eyes and right in front of the ear is really critical. And if you play along, you know, if you're mindful and you're practicing deep breathing and you're not looking at a computer screen, you know, ideally you're just letting your eyes close, your mouth hang open. So all this musculature is not engaged. She got it. And it worked for her. So she took it into road home leadership and 
Chicago and, and they just wrote me today and they asked me to become a vendor. So my company now is a vendor of the road home and it couldn't be happier because it's a, it's a big organization. They're well appreciated. They're well, you know, supported by a lot of big uh, organizations here in the country. And so I'm just really excited to be able to work with an organization of that caliber and find that we're helping them. And, you know, it goes back to me saying thanks to Curtis and Mike, because they're still serving me through the other side, from the other side, if you will. And uh, I mean that. So that's, that's the big news for today. I'm really stoked. That, that's awesome. That That's definitely huge news, man. And yeah. knowing that those are going to be put to good use. And of course we both know that it's, it's not going to help with just headaches and TMD. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they'll, they'll, yeah, ever, somebody's always coming. That's what they going, say. Hey, it's going to be. Yeah. My sinuses clear up. You should sell this thing for sinuses. I I got a video from a lady since I talked to you, and um, she has Bell's palsy. And she, I said, hey, I'm really. I've had people tell me it helps with Bell's palsy, but can I get a video testimonial out of you if I donate a device to you? And she did it, and she gave me a video. She goes through it and talking about mm -hmm. it. So you're right. There's so much connectivity with all the facial muscle. It overlaps, like your eye musculature comes back, you know, your temporalis goes down, the masseter goes up. This is the most complex joint in the human body, your temple mandibular joint. So there's a lot going on. And, and yeah, other people, uh, they'll say, hey, it helped me with my tinnitus. You know, I did a video and a review with, uh, a guy who rewiring tinnitus. He's a social media influencer, and you know, say what you will about people like that. They got their place, right? They're trying to help for the most part, and his focus is tinnitus. Well, he put a video out talking about the device after he used it for three, four months, and lo and behold, now I've been selling them with his discount code all over the place. That's been two years ago. So you're right. You, people will find other things that they find a temple massage are helpful for, which is great because that's like discovery for me. You know, it's, it's real discovery. Yeah. I mean, well, just, you know, even PTS, just uh, taking that break, the, the act of. Disengaging, letting your awareness go down, yeah, drop the vigilance for a minute. Exactly. Just, just, just changing your behavior and your focus on whatever, whatever was stressing you or triggering you to putting something else in your hand and changing your activities, changing your mindset, doing something else. You know, that's just, yeah, just break that vigilance, break that. If you're stuck in a negative intrusive thought and it's bugging you, you know, and I've been through it cause my buddy Curtis drowned and you know, I was 20 years old, man. He was a 19 year old kid from Oakland. And for a long time, I beat myself up. And, and at some point, I was like, I, I don't think this is a good idea, you know, because it, it led me to drinking too much and trying to bury it. And, you know, this is why I'm really grateful to Temple of Sasha because it gives me a purpose, you know. And so, um, yeah, breaking the vigilance, it's great for negative intrusive thoughts, distraction, especially if you use the aromatherapy on the Temple Massager. You know, it's got this little pad right here. And you just, you drop the lavender on it. And then, so as I'm using this, obviously the pads like right under my nose. So that's all factory nerve stimulation. In case you didn't notice, I have a big all factory nerve. <laughs> so being able to break your focus on a negative intrusive thoughts, really important. And there's a million ways you can do it. Temple Sauger just happens to be one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's what's key. I mean, that's what keep, can keep literally somebody here alive for tomorrow. And that's kind yeah. of what I met with, you know, this, this new news today, you know, it's, it's not, not just going to help veterans with TMD and some headaches. We know that they're, they're probably dealing with PTS and, and other issues, right. That it's inevitably going to help with, or just relieving tension and just relaxing. Cause there's, there's nothing quite like just being relaxed and what that does for you just versus just walking around with just tension in you yeah. all the time. Like it's not good for your body, like your body in general, the, let alone your face. <laughs> like you just, yeah, we, it'll st stress can manifest into physical ailment. It'll also wear down your teeth like mine. And I've cracked a couple 
And so stress will manifest into physical ailment. It's just a matter of fact. So the longer people go without addressing it, and again, I'm not just sitting here trying to sell a temple massage. You can go work out, right? You can go take a walk. But anything you do to break your vigilance, break that negative intrusive thought, try to elicit the relaxation response, you know, need to elicit that parasympathetic nervous system, uh, get into that meditative state if you can. And that is relaxation. It's called the relaxation response. And so anytime that somebody's been through trauma, whether you're first responder, civilian, veteran, bad stuff is bad stuff. It could be a car accident. It, you know, it could be violence. You witness violence. Who knows what it is? So it's just we have the right as people to live the rest of our lives without having, you know, our past paint our future. And so any way somebody can break that cycle of having their past affect their future is a big self-help component in an overall mental health picture. You know, the temple massager just happens to help with some of the effects of PTS. PTS is a big name brand overarching term. And what it really comes down to is sleeplessness, headaches, you're over tensing this cracked teeth, TMD grinding. Right. And I've lived it, brother. My teeth anger, are irritability. <laughs> I mean, gosh, there's, you're there's pissed off. Really, you're irritable. You're looking for list. ways out. You're looking for a bad guy. And you're like, man, I'm, I'm at the grocery store. I don't know that I need to. Why am I so right hyper vigilant at the grocery store? Like exactly. there's just a 90 year old lady in the next aisle. And there's the butcher over there passing out some shrimp and like, it's, yeah, there's not I'm really okay. a threat here, you know, this is okay. But, you know? Yeah. Or, I mean, or if like, you're in an environment where you need your vigilance, you better peek that up. Okay. But yeah, we're not talking about that. We're not going tactical. We're not going, you know, warrior mode. We're going, you know, here's the bottom line. I love this. There's, there's a police department that they had a phrase that said something like, Taking care of yourself ensures a caregiver's ability to give care, something like that, right? So if you want to look at it like like me, I, I've always tried to be an asset to other people. I just see myself as serving my fellow human beings here, you know, and, and uh, I'm grateful I got an idea and a tool to do that with. But just as a person, you know, find it, find a sense of purpose again, right? So... Um, Anyway, I don't want to wax on too much here. Yeah, but you have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself for other people to be able to take care of you. Because if you don't take care of yourself and you make it a pain in the butt, then how can a caregiver ever possibly take care of you? No, they're not. And that's when you find yourself alone, which is sad. Because, you know, people that are really angry and and uptight and pissed off or whatever you want to call it, they're probably hurting. And they really could use the care, the attention. So... If you can try to get yourself into a better spot, whatever means, that makes you available for other people. And then if you could turn it around to make yourself, you know, be in a better spot, well, then guess what? You can go help other people. Go, go find somebody that's going through what you went through. Your vigilance is out of control. You're, you're, you're angry or whatever, but you got through it. You work through it. Well, go give that gift to somebody else now. Go find a person like you and gently try to see if you can help them ease out of the ultra vigilance, you know, and, and, um, do some tactical calming, you know, whatever it takes. Yeah. Figure out whatever, whatever you can help somebody with. Cause it, you know, it could be, it could be anything causing, causing something. You also have to keep in mind that there's a root, uh, there's ways that, those things kind of manifest themselves physically, you know, physically and in, you know, in communication. Uh, but then there's an effect of what those, you know, does in somebody's life too. You know, it, it affects your work and your relationships and those kind of things. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy what, uh, yeah, what can happen with mental health and all that stuff. And we, we all find ourselves in this world, like it's veterans we all, we all sign on the dotted line to serve our country and to serve, 
And here we are serving others in a different capacity now. And we're talking about first responders who serve. Like, it's just, uh, I don't know, it must just be in our blood somehow. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of veterans in the first first responder community, for sure, big, big veteran population in that community. So, um, yeah, find a, find a reason to serve, you know, I guess if I had an overarching message to people that might find themselves frustrated with life, <clears throat> frustrated with themselves, feeling disappointed or negative, you know, find a reason to serve. Again, if it's you opening a door for a little lady, then go do it. Make it happen, yeah. right? You know, I had another uh, question for you because you've kind of mentioned police. You kind of mentioned fire earlier, but have you had any any connections with or any feedback from the nursing community? Because you mentioned COVID earlier, and we know how stressful that was on the medical community. Oh, yeah. Ha have have you gotten any feedback from the medical community? Because as we were kind of talking about that, I was like, man, I could totally see just nurse. I mean, I remember the pictures and videos during COVID of just completely worn out medical staff. Yeah. And I was getting that visual in my head of like, man, could they have used that? Talk sure about it now. And they're talking about know, overtaxing, but, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have individual uh, RNs, registered nurses that have used it. I've actually got feedback from a dental study that we did on TMD. And one of them was a registered nurse. And so the, the problem I have with getting into that community is, you know, you're never going to get it done individually. Like me going and talking to a nurse, an RN, did it help her? Did the device help her? Yeah. Is she going to turn around and go into a hospital and get them to listen? No. She, she's right. already taxed out. She's not going to take, or he, he or she are not going to take that task and that workload to go work this in. So my, you know, my focus is what can I cause effect in right now? And right now it's veterans and working with the VA and, and, and first responders. I'd love to get into working with medical staff because I know it'll help them. I've already got feedback from medical staff. It's just really difficult to get hospitals and universities to pay attention, to get their attention. You know, everybody's so washed over with sales pitches, tchotchke, you know, just BS people are, and I get it. People are trying to sell and make a living. Makes sense. Well, especially in, in the hospital setting. Uh, yeah. All they, the they don't want this Trotsky snake companies. oil BS in their, you know, existence or their realm. So at some point I will try to pivot into, you know, I don't know, maybe I would go to like nurses unions, try to find union reps, um, hospitals, Man, I thought getting into VA was tough. I guess that makes Hospitals, sense. You think about their organizational structure and how much. Yeah, they you can't even get to any of these people. Like they won't sense. even take your call, man. And believe me, I've tried. I've blasted my face on the brick wall again. I will fight for other people, and I have never gotten in any civilian hospitals. Now I have had a representative of Kaiser Research tell me, Joe, the second your pilot study is complete, I will engage with you. Right now, I can't engage with you because you don't have a completed pilot study. And so we're working on that with Palo Alto VA and I'm working with this great guy, he's a PhD, Dr. John McQuaid out of Palo Alto. And so it's really difficult to get into the medical establishment and for all kinds of reasons, probably some not even acknowledged, but, you know. Makes sense now. Yeah. I'm going to try. I'm not giving up. It's just I have to, you know pace myself and calibrate what good can I cause. And so when I get traction, like we are from law enforcement and fire and, and obviously the VA and, and psychological services groups, like, you know, the road home code four, uh, I'm talking to another company, uh, what are they called? First responder wellness out of long beach. They claim to be the biggest, uh, psychological services company out there for resilience and first responder community. When I get traction, I give them my attention. When I get a brick wall, okay, that's going to be dealt with later. Uh, right now, and sometimes you got to bypass a target in a military sense, you know, and go back to it or, or, or encircle them, right? The pincer move. How do you, how do you want to refer to this? That's kind of my long way of getting into a first a hospital uh, organization is I need to kind of 
surround them a little bit, you know? And so me being able to tell you that I'm working with the road home is a big part of that. Uh, and makes, so makes a lot of sense. We're going to get there at some point because here's what will happen. It'll switch over. I've, seen, I've already seen this. Well, uh, it's being used over here, here, and here, and here, X, Y, Z. And these individual organizations or uh, facilities, why don't we have it? Instead of, oh, well, Joe, your little temple massager tool hasn't really proven itself. And, you know, we can't deal with you because you're not ready, you know. You're just snake oil to us right now, or whatever the case may be. It's starting to flip over now, you know. And so people are like, well, you're, you've got it in all these different locations with police, fire, you know, veterans, psychological services organizations, et cetera. Now I start hearing people go, well, why don't we have it? <laughs> I love how you answered that because I just had a couple of thoughts there. At first, I was thinking, well, A, you got to manage your stress, but then B, you know, you got to, you know, you got to help, you know, whoever and however you can, like what's who you can help. But then you, you know, we're talking about a brick wall. And I was thinking like from a security standpoint, like what is my hard target, my soft target? Like if exactly. it's just too hard at this point to get into the hospitals, I'll go after the soft target. Well, small little police departments, fire departments where the, the, the community helps buy it or they have the budget to be able to do it. And you can actually talk to somebody not to make that sound like it's a soft target, like, but it's just, it's easier to get in the door and you can make the bigger impact and you can actually get it in somebody's hands and you can impact people's lives and save people's lives. Yeah. And then we'll let the dominoes fall. And once you get, you know, X amount, and it, it, it crosses over into just like general business strategy too. Like if you want to grow your business, starting out, like you can't just go after the biggest, you know, if you take a geographic area, you can't go after the biggest account. I mean, you could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you <laughs> but if you're a brand you new can. business with no track record, they're probably not going to hire you. You're gonna have there's to go always after, that wild card approach, but yeah, you got to right. go after a bunch of other little accounts, and you got to go get the business that you can. You have to build that track record until yep. that competitor sits up and says, "Hey, this this Joe guy and his product, I like this because I've I've heard all of this other uh, chatter out there about this. I've seen the social proof." I, you know, I know what, what's going on now. And then they approach you, you know, being the game plan. So I, I love that. I was kind of piecing all that together as you were talking in my head. I'm like, Oh, I love this. You know, yeah. Like, it's I a big picture. You know, there's a lot of moving parts, you know? And so for me, I happen to be able to keep it in my head. Yeah. I've got people constantly telling me, Oh, you gotta get a spreadsheet. You gotta put it all out. And I'm like, I have the mind for it all. It is, it is all documented. I have log books. I, I can re refer to, documentation, feedback, and my own extemporaneous notes, et cetera, right? So, but yeah, you got to, I'll get back to the medical community at some point. Um, like it or not, the pilot study being complete is a big part of that. And we're still, you know, trying to get that done. I'm always reaching out to researchers and PhDs institutions. But uh, yeah, at some point, it is a hard target in a business sense. Um, and then, you know, once you get enough of these other entities on board and uh, then people, like I said, they're going to start switching over and go, well, why isn't it here? Why don't we have access to this tool or this device? And so um, right now we've got our Temple Massager Highway, I like to call it, going across the country from Santa Rosa, Colorado, Santa Rosa, California, Colorado's uh, uh, Code 4. Um we just landed today starting to work with um, the road home and they want to, they were talking about sharing it with their other four entities. What well, happens to be UCLA, Boston, uh, University of Miami might be another one, but you know, once it gets in one bigger group, then they see it working or helping, then they're going to grow it internally. Right. So um, if I can, you know, if I can land Cincinnati PD and or fire and I can land Boston, which we're on the verge of, I mean, my, my point of contact there, um, he basically looked at everything and said, I, I'm in. Like, he's like, I'm ready to buy 10 of these right now. Uh, but give me a sample. Let's get it over to this operations chief at the wellness and blah, blah, blah. And we'll go from there. So I, that's roughly like Highway 80 across the country. So it's kind of ended up that way for me with who we're working with. So I've got the Temple Massager Highway 80 mode going on. And 
Um, I'm hoping to land the last two in Ohio and um, out there in Boston and we'll be across the country, literally. And then from that point, uh, if you want to call them flanky movements, we'll go north and south. Here you go. There's a there's a, a new business strategy for you. Just just run your business down I-80. You or go. you can do Route 66 <laughs> or <laughs> just pick, pick another route. Uh, whichever direction you want, you go north. Pick south. a highway, just roll, highway. baby. Just, just go up and down the highway. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that one's in the college textbooks. You just, you right. just creating some new stuff there, Joe. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that's the beauty of creating a new product is there's all these different new terminologies, phrases, new applications. It's new. That's the beauty of innovation is that once you get it and you and you kind of prove it, like we have then there's still discoveries to be made. There's still new things to be, new phrases, right? So it's kind of exciting in that sense to have that live wire of activity in my life. And again, that's why I'm also grateful. I've got that spark, if you will, that live wire potential. So we are creating language situations, use. It's all spurring from one innovative uh, idea from the temple massager. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you'd probably agree with this. A lot of struggling forward, a lot of little fails here and there to l- learn yeah. these little lessons in order to be like, oh, okay, well, this didn't work. Now we're going to try this. and Cool. Now that works. All right. Now we're going to learn. You got to be able to pivot quick. I, I, I was, you know, I was, I guess, affiliated with the infantry because I was a combat engineer. But that ability to move light means you can pivot quickly. And you don't have a bunch of checklists and people to go through to get OKs and permission um i'm the leader of the ship here i'm the captain the ceo founder whatever and i get to make decisions freely and so i like that light capacity of engagement for me to go out and and pivot quickly as possible as i can and so it helps to keep things light in a certain sense you know big corporations they got to pass everything by you know who knows how many committees and how many people and um i'm lucky i don't have to go through that you know so and it's interesting too i got all this really great uh, feedback we're helping people again first responders veterans and i to this day i could still never get an investor on board but um i don't know that it was a good idea if i did i remember i met with matt griff mcgriff he he, he made combat flip-flops you remember that guy i do remember that yeah he was i met him at a, a bunker labs event and he was there because he was a Shark Tank winner, and a bunch of other guys were there. Um, I got the guy that uh, made the the grunt style t shirts, Daniel Lark. I met Daniel there. So there's one minute where I'm sitting next to Matt, and I'm like, Matt, and your experience of being on the Shark Tank and everything you're doing, you're growing your business. Give me your. I'm thinking about taking an investor on. Give me your take on you know what it's like to get an investor and work with them. And I swear to God, I'm telling you the stone cold truth. Matt looks at me and he says, Joe, I'm going to be stone cold honest with you. Uh, I would rather have your big ass. I'm like 6'4", 240. He's like, I'd rather have your big ass stomp on my nuts than ever take money from an investor again. (laughs) It's funny. It's silly. But the guy's speaking truth. So I've I've always been like, man, I wanted to get an investor and make it easy and change things and accelerate and pour racing fuel on the thing. And then I'm like, maybe I don't, you know, keep thinking about what Matt said, you know, it's got some validity validity and truth in that. So here we are. I'm still doing this independently. I have a couple of friends that invest and that was about it. So we're independent, made in USA, 100% veteran owned. I got rich since I saw you. I got registered as a service disabled veteran of small business with the VA, that's a tough thing to get. And then I've got registered with the state of California Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise. So we've got our two certifications, DBBE and the Service Disabled Veteran Owned Business with the VA and state of California. So what were the biggest challenges to getting those for anybody else who's kind of thinking about going down those those paths and, and getting those? Getting the, I, I've heard that before, that they're challenging. Yeah, the state one was a lot easier. Let me just put it that way. You know, they want to look at your taxes. They want to make sure you're a viable entity, that you exist, you know. Understandable. Um, because the VA has a Veterans First program, which I'm still <laughs> navigating. Not exactly there yet, but we have sold to the VA. I'm trying to re- rekindle all that. 
Um, it's paperwork, man. They're going to paper you. You know, you got to have all these taxes, I think three to five years back taxes. They want to see all that. It's just a lot of paperwork, a lot of certifying, you know, they're going to come back at you saying we need this. We're going to come back to you. We need that. So it, it is a pain. But the other thing is there's a lot of people trying to scam the VA and other people. So they got to go through a filter process. They have to make it tough. And that's why it's tough. So knowing that it's tough is half the battle and being prepared for the fight. Sounds like uh, just about every experience with the VA. Yeah, it's doable. <laughs> you know, if it's worth doing, you know, you want to put the energy out, right? If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So they say. That's a good point. That's that's a darn good point. That yeah, <laughs> everybody would be doing it. So, well, Joe, I I really appreciate you coming on here and kind of give us an update. And I'm gonna throw the uh, the website up here, to scrolling at the bottom. So it's in the show notes for anybody who's listening or anybody who's watching. Clickable link down there. But uh, uh, anything else that you want to share with us? Any any other updates? Any other news? Uh, no, that's kind of it. You know, I don't want to go on too much. We got a lot cooking, but those are the high points, and I'm really excited about it. Awesome. Well, I will say, you know, I've had mine here ever since after we recorded the first one, and uh, you know, everybody really should. If you don't have one, you should get one. If, especially if you have. Well, I won't go through the whole list of things, but if you have any things we mentioned today, it, it it's worth getting one. You know, it, it can really really help you. Facial muscle um, tension relief. That's kind of how I put it in a nutshell. There you go. Facial muscle tension relief. Yes. Yep. That doesn't exactly roll off my tongue all that, as fast as it does <laughs> yours. But, um, yeah, it's it's really good for that. I, I have mine right there in my little bookshelf right here in my office. So um, it's it's a great little tool, and it's something, that, like you said earlier, I mean, it is lightweight. It's super – I don't know what the actual, actual weight is, but it's it's only, what, maybe 12 inches long or so? Roughly. 15 inches long. 15, okay. I was, I was figuring about it. it. I mean, maybe it's it's an inch in diameter. And yeah, this can... is ballistic nylon. You know, I think since I talked to you, I made it stronger, by the way. So uh, we increased the strength of the arms because I was getting a little flex out of this. So it's even better now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's solid. It's lightweight. I mean, you could throw it in, in any backpack. It's You know, you're not going to feel it in there. It's, it's not going to weigh it down. So... Um, yeah, it's not like it's some device that you're going to have to plug in or lug around and it's going to be heavy or it's going to take sophisticated stuff. It, it yeah. There's no real learning curve to, to using it. <laughs> no, it's simple. It's, I mean, we, we got it out. It's as simple to, as it gets, folks. It was, it was light enough and sturdy enough. And the fact it's manual, it's not battery operated. We are going to make it vibrate, though. That's, that's in the works. Um, it, you know, it was taken to Ford operating bases. That says a lot. If you know anything about military, they're not going to take frivolous stuff out to a FOB. Yeah. You know what? The thing I like about it is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of treatments for a lot of these different things. There's a lot of devices that you can get that are expensive, even whether or not the VA gets it, or you got to go pay for yourself. Like they're expensive. They take up space. Sometimes you have to buy a lot of stuff to replace things. It, it can get frustrating, you know, like if you, yeah, Simplicity is what I was striving for with this whole thing, man. Keep it simple. Yep. Yep. The old, the old kiss method, right? Keep it simple, yep. stupid or whatever. So exactly. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I highly encourage anybody to, uh, you know, struggle with those issues to get one, or if you have a loved one that's struggling with those, might be a good time to get one or two. Yep. Hey, Chris, Christmas is coming up in a few months. I know we're middle of the year, but Hey, you know, you know, just, just to get the Christmas to banner. Later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, roll the Christmas banner. You know, it's, everybody's it, talking about you start Christmas too early. What the heck hey, is you know what? Hey, it's it's it. Yeah. So what if it's the middle of summer? <laughs> I, you know, hey, don't know when people are going to actually listen to this. Right. So just in case it's middle of, uh, of of winter and it's Christmas time, buy it for Christmas if it's close to a birthday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but anyway, I do appreciate you coming back on here, Joe, and and kind of sharing with us. It's exciting to hear that you know, not only you're taking it from the veteran community, but getting some traction there in the first responder community. Because man. Have they, have they had a rough, rough couple of years dealing yep. with COVID and, uh, you know, a lot of different things over the last Everything couple of years. Everything else they deal so, with. Yep. yep. It's a job that I wouldn't want to do. I When I got out of the Air Force, I had a lot of people in my family be like, you're going to continue on in law enforcement? And I was like, nope, nope, not for me. And so I I know 
a little bit of what it takes to do their job. And I, that was enough for me to say, no, I, I don't want to do that long term. So, you know, I've always said yep. hats off to them for doing what they do. Um, so they deserve it. They, they need it. Yep. They, and they need that stress relief to be able to do their job and option, you know, operate to the best ability. So absolutely. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing with us again. All right, Keith, great to see you again. Um, hope you come back on another few months or a year and, and have more to share with you. Absolutely. Take it easy, Joe. All right, brother. Thanks again. You be well. Here you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and once again, on my website, if there's not a resource on there you think should be, please reach out and let me know. But most importantly, since we're talking about you know a lot of uh, health stuff and mental health today, uh, if you're struggling and you really need help, Remember, the suicide hotline number is 988-PRESS-1 because the most important thing is we want you here tomorrow, Battle Buddies. You got to be here tomorrow. Reach out for help. That's the number to call. Get the help.